people what's going on um back at you another edition of gen sports corner uh, it's been a little bit uh, i wasn't fin- feeling uh well uh recently but um stay on page see. yeah i wasn't feeling well recently but i'm, I'm back so certainly uh it's good to be here and i'm i'm here to talk about the eagles man week one what a game you know i'm glad they got down to brazil got back safe and we got to find out a lot of things about this team in game one so let's start out with the, the final score 34 29 it was it was a a shootout at points in this game and even though the score was high it doesn't really begin to tell uh the tale of what the defense was able to do for this eagles team in terms of keeping us in the game um you look at jalen hurts 20 for 34 278 yards two touchdowns two picks he had a really bad interception um uh as well as one he should have had three interceptions he had one on the sideline near the 10 yard line we were in the red zone and he dropped back and he was looking to the flat and he skinned back to the middle of the field didn't see any, see anything and he tried to throw it back to the flat it's like dude the defenders sitting on that route and he was very fortunate that that wasn't a pick six but you know all in all he was able to make plays down the stretch when it mattered and the a big reason why the Eagles were able to win be, was because of the defense, obviously, and Saquon Barkley, among other things. Saquon Barkley, 24 carries, 109 yards, and two touchdowns. Josh Jacobs, he did his thing, 16 carries, 84 yards. Jordan Love, he had a, a, a solid game, but he was missing a lot of throws down the stretch. Early on, he was on fire. He went 17 for 34, 260 yards. Two touchdowns and an interception. The first half, he was almost unstoppable, and we were we were really we did a really good job of holding them to two field goals on their first two drives. When really they they could have gone up fourteen nothing or ten nothing early on, and that would have really put us into a hole. But the defense was able to lock down, especially when they were within our ten and I think at one point our five yard line, and we just got stop after stop after stop. Great play by the defensive line and Jalen Carter, 98. He was a game wrecker. Go look at uh, Brian Baldinger's um, mm-hmm. breakdown and analysis on Instagram, and he has film breaking down 98 and how you have to have eyes on him at all time. Man, he was just collapsing the pocket. Um, whether he was collapsing the pocket in the pass game and he was just disrupting things in the run game. He was he was either clogging up gaps were just being such a disruptive force that they couldn't maintain gap integrity on some of their run plays, despite having Josh Jacobs back there getting uh, some some yardage here and there. We did a really good job of stopping them, slowing them down at points. Um, But Saquon Barkley, man, he had the first uh, catch swing route, I believe, off the uh, left side. Jalen, Jalen Hurts um, drops back. I can't remember if it was play action. Scans the field and then comes to the wheel route up the left sideline. And look, people look at Saquon Barkley. First, they had questions about his durability. Can he still run? Does he still have the burst? And then after that, people really, I think, underestimate how good of a, um, a receiver he is, man. He's not just a regular running back. He can actually be a weapon out of the backfield. And then he got that as the first touchdown. And then the second touchdown, um, he he made a move, man. He put he put a nasty move on somebody. Eleven yard run. So I think it might have been Trayvon Walker. I think number seven for the Packers. He he goes. Um, he he gets the handoff. He's between the center and the guard. And then I think Trayvon Walker is right there. And then he skirt goes to his right and boom. He he just shot like a rocket through that that open space and it was a touchdown so it it, it looked he looked like he did in his rookie year like the burst was there the vision the speed everything man and then his third touchdown you talk about um in this in the third quarter he had a two-yard run and that one was um I mean, that was really good, man. He drove through a couple of tacklers and just powered his way into the end zone. So, like, people that had questions about Saquon freaking out of your skull. And then even in the third quarter, we we maintained um, – we were able to keep control of the game and set the pace of the game in the second half. Um, and even at parts in the first half with the run game. Um, but A.J. Brown, man, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, they were the offense through the air. 
Dallas Goddard had some some catches here and there, but it, it was those two. They're the ones that made it happen. And if you looking here at the stats, um, let me go up to AJ Brown here. Where where's he at? I always lose track of stuff. AJ Brown, ten targets, five receptions, 119 yards, and a touchdown on that 67 yard uh, play when he got the one on one matchup. This is coming out of the locker room in the third quarter, and two plays, 70 yards. First play, I don't remember what it was. Might have been a run play for three yards or something like that to Saquon. And then the second play, they got that one on one matchup at the top of the uh, at the top of the screen. If you're watching the game. Um, uh, live and once he got that ball it was it was placed at a, at a good spot he got that ball and he outran two defenders to the end zone man people don't realize how fast aj brown is he's as close to a wide receiver as we've had to to so you know you have him and saquon on the same field let's be real and then Devonte smith eight targets seven catches 84 yards and he had uh, one or two critical catches that extended a few drives so like he those two. And then Dallas Goddard, five targets, four catches, 31 yards. And then after that, it was Saquon, two recept shoot two receptions on two targets for a touchdown. And then really everybody else only got one target. Calcaterra, Gainwell, Dotson, Wilson. And Dotson and Wilson didn't have a catch. So, you know, it was really the A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith show for the most part. And they did not disappoint, especially in the clutch. And then defensively, Zach Bond was everywhere. 11 total tackles, 15 total, two sacks, one tackle for loss, and two QB hits. How much better can you have, can you play in your Eagles debut, I believe? Crazy, man. Crazy numbers. And Vic Vangio was raving about him in training camp. And boy, did he come out and produce, man. He was all over the, the, the field. I'm trying not to curse too much. And then Reed Blankenship, eight total tackles. Four solo tackles, a pass deflection, and then he had a key interception um, at a critical point in the game where we needed a play. Okay, so you got that interception, and then that led to, um, let's see, I think it was, it led to the third Saquon Barkley touchdown from two yards out. You got the interception. They had gone, Green Bay had gone up 26 to 24. And we probably stalled out on the drive, gave them the ball back, and they were starting to move. Move. They they had the ball in their. I think that was the after a punt. They got the ball in their territory, and then we were able to force that interception. And then speaking on that, the other thing that kept us in the game was special teams. I know this kind of flew under the radar, um, but you know Jake Elliott, two field goals, two critical. Um, uh, two critical kicks, man. Got a six points, but even more so, our punter, man, uh, Brayden, man. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me get, get his name right. Oh uh, yeah, Brayden, man. Two punts, 101 yards, and he had it. So his net average was 50.5, and he had a long uh, punt of 54 yards. The a good net average for a punter would be 45 yards because if you punt the ball 45 yards, you're pretty much flipping field position. So if you're averaging 50, you, your team is always going to be in position to be in that game because you're forcing the other team to drive down the field every time. And look, like I said, I said I think I said in the previous video on the uh, initial 53-man roster how Braden Mann was their guy now. They gave him a deal, and he had a great, uh, really great year last year. I think I, I said that, and he's going to uh, be crucial for this team to win. People don't think about that, but he's crucial. Like, when you control field position, your offense can sputter like it did. But if you have a strong run game and uh, a great punter and then throw a great kicker o on top of that, you're going to be tough to be beat by default, even if you just had an average defense and offense because you're always going to be able to dictate field position because the other team is not going to be perfect. Even the, the great teams, they stall out against average teams from time to time. And if you can always uh, pin the other team back, even with a high power offense, if you're going against them, um, you'll be able to keep yourself in the game because you're constantly going to put the pressure on them to be perfect every drive and drive down the field. So if the defense is able to play good to, uh, to great, they don't even have to be great. They just have to be good. If they're good. With that special teams, they're going to be hard to beat already. 
and then you add this offense on top of it, I think that people don't really understand how hard to beat this Eagles team is going to be this year. Well, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they were able to win this game against a very good Packers team despite having um, two to maybe three turnovers, um, three turnovers, two, two of them being interceptions and one being a fumble on a snap from Cam Jurgens to uh, Jalen Hurts, I think. And and then we weren't able to even get a fumble that we forced from out of Josh Jacobs from a uh, big pay, play slay. And even with all that, it's the running game, the defense, and that special teams um, that allowed us to get a win over a very, very solid, too good Packer team with Jordan Love at the helm on the road in Brazil. So that's my thoughts on it. I, I thought I'd give them like a, a, a B. I'd give them like a, a, a B for their greed, okay? They, they did a lot of, they did what explosive teams do in the clutch when they need to get shit done. All right, and, and they made the plays when they needed to. But obviously, they shouldn't have been in some of those situations to begin with had they uh, been doing what they were supposed to from the get-go. So I give them a B grade. Um, and so now they can go back, uh, clean up the the uh, rough parts. And these a lot of the mistakes they made are, are, are fixable. They're, they're, they're simple, simple things. But um, at least we came out with the dub and we're able to lick our wounds while celebrating the victory so let me know what you guys think in the comments and i will be, ma be making a video uh for my raiders fans um probably tomorrow or wednesday and i'll talk about that loss um or maybe i might just react to the game yeah i'm going to start reacting to the game so i'm going to actually re react to the game and then give my analysis after um you know my reaction i'll, I'll start doing live reactions on youtube to those but obviously i, I heard about the score and i wasn't pleased but was i really surprised going into week one no so um I, I didn't think we were going to beat the chargers even though the chargers are going through a little bit of turbulence with the roster turnover but um they were still the better team so let i want to go and look at the game and see where our weak points are and um then also see where our strong points are and see what we need to do to get better this season but uh leave a like leave a comment once i post this up on youtube and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm going to go ahead and watch this Jets and 49ers game because it's going to get real interesting. Because uh, Run CMC, he got ruled out at the last second. Changes a lot of things. So let's see how this game goes. I, I'm, I'm rooting for the Jets. I like the Jets. Um, I want to see Aaron Rodgers come back and have a bounce back year, man. So I'm going to get my popcorn ready and uh, enjoy the games. All right. Catch y'all. Peace.